Welcome back to another episode. It's springtime. We're back doing deer hunting things. We are back on Broke G2 farm and there hasn't been any signs of Broke G2. He's a deer that we would really love to find some sheds of. I have walked a little bit of this farm already. Caitlin has walked a little bit of this farm already, but we got a good section of it that we haven't walked quite yet. So we're gonna do that today. And honestly, we're probably just gonna do a lot of driving around and checking. This is like a big ditch farm, a lot of grass, a lot of ditches. So probably gonna just do a good amount of driving around. Um, we got some time, it's a beautiful day just to get out and find some sheds off of some deer. Cause there's definitely a lot of deer that we haven't found yet. So that's what we're doing today. 90% of this farm when we find our sheds is typically in little tiny grass belts like this. And I feel like for most ag country, you find a lot, a lot of sheds in these little grass, little ditches in the middle of the field. Cause they come out, they eat in the fields all night. And then they just go in bed in these for a couple hours during the night. Like they don't go back to the timber. They don't go back to stuff. So I feel like, especially this year and last year, most of the sheds we have been finding are in grassy, natu natural little grassy cuts like this. So we're just gonna kind of drive, kind of slow. It's really efficient, honestly, to just look for them right from the side by side. We got our first one, it's an old one, but it counts. It's kind of exciting. I wonder if it's a big dog or not. Dang. Huh, I don't know who that is. But it's good. They like this this grassiness. And last year, right in this little grass pocket, we found like seven. So, but it's now it's tilled beans all around it, so it kind of makes sense that they're not in it. And this was the last year's shed. Keep on chugging. First one though on the board. All right. We're gonna bump out here and walk, but this is the infamous spot where I had the encounter with Broke G2 up in that tree. Um, but I was just standing around looking and I was thinking about this too. The way this trail works is it comes around, but it starts bending towards a tree stand right here and then kind of loops. And I think one of the things that, you know, I think we can improve on this is this trail, it's almost facing like in the peripheral, you can see that stand up there. So all I'm thinking I want to do here is, is you can manipulate a trail a little bit and I think I'm just going to straighten it out so that they're just walking directly parallel with this tree that, you know, right now we're probably 20 yards away, but it's just like any sort of trail that's looking at you, obviously you're more exposed to, to you know, being seen or whatever. So very easily, I think we can take this tree and we're gonna lay it right on this trail. And there's another tree, we're gonna lay it right on the trail and I'll come in another day with a weed whacker and I'll just buzz where I want them to go, just right here. It's not a big move. It's literally, we're just gonna bump the trail over two, three yards. Essentially, we'll straighten it out. So it's still the least path of, or the path of least resistance for the deer. And we'll bump this vine scrape just over a little bit, which will help detour them. But it'll kind of just make their vision a little bit straighter when they're moving on this. And they won't be more in the peripheral of that tree stands. You know, maybe if this was straight, we wouldn't have got busted up in that tree. You never know, it's always good. You know, every hunting season, I'm always learning. You always should be learning. And every spot is never like perfect. I think you're continually trying to learn how to maybe switch trees or just manipulate a tree a little bit. Like in this case, just two little tiny pop can trees we're gonna dump over. We'd whack a new little trail, move the vine scrape. And I really think they'll very easily adopt that, especially early in the spring time, or it's still winter time like this. Give them all summer to get used to it and everything. I think it'll be good. Not the proper tools for this, but we're making do. Might need to get big cat on this. All the cat. You gotta get big cat on the job here. Fabulous. All right, so now we made a little blockade looking thing. And it's just a little bit, like I said, we're not trying to, if you ever try to make a deer make like a right turn or anything dumb like that, you can't do that. But very natural for trees to fall over and stuff. You know, deer are gonna come in here and they're just gonna be slightly bumped over. And now our shot's a little bit further. It's probably three yards further and uh, they'll be on a better trail. It's almost like a, it was an inward curve. Now it's an outward curve. 
So they won't be looking in our direction, won't be on our peripheral a little bit better. Quick work, took two minutes. Well, Andrew found some pack set. Did I walk by the other one? Gotta make you hunt for it. Hmm, it's incredibly hard with this sun. Am I being dumb right now? Oh, way over there. Dang, that's kind of cool. You don't see them like that every day. Mm -hmm. Huh. It was really laying just like that, huh? Yeah. Wow. Future Booner. It's going to take a couple years. Nice work, Andrew. It's three. I don't think, this is where all the cut beans are. I don't, I don't think it's going to be heavy sheds over here. I just don't. Just found a shed. That might have got tilled in. Holy cow. It looks like you got all busted up and tilled in. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, that definitely got tilled into the field. It's amazing the amount they get lost to farming just out in all these fields. Well, we're out here today shed hunting, and sometimes it's good news, sometimes it's bad news. Found a couple, but I think I just rolled up on the buck I was hoping not to find. Yeah. Yeah. This is him, guys. <clears throat> Dear, I was really hoping to be sitting behind. Had this deer at about under 20 yards. Saw him multiple times. He ended up getting a foot injury. We saw him on trail camera. And uh, last photo we had of him, it's like November 26. And... Uh, Right where he's at, right here, makes sense. It's just driving around in this grass. We found him. I mean, we, I must have honestly went by him several, several times during season, but gosh, that's a bummer. A couple days after now from finding this dude, Broke T2, we've had him in this box. And when I picked his head off the ground, this popped off, his shed popped off which stinks, but we still got, we got a salvage tag for him. What this video is going to be, or this part of the video is gonna be boiling this guy's head to get it into a Euro. And then I've done a decent amount of research. There is a way to reconnect this back to here once it's all final and done. So I don't know, it might be a little bit of an experiment, but we're at least going to get uh, this dude boiled in attempt. It'll be a little DIY session here, but I boiled several skulls the other day and i posted on my stories a lot of people were wondering i actually bought this a while ago it's the bridger boiler euro skull system and it actually opens oh, it's a knife nice opens up and there's um, a bunch of adjustments and this rod goes in here for uh keeping the antlers up and then it's actually a nose rod right here that goes inside it's a little nasty i tried to just give it a quick power wash but um i did three skulls i knew i had to do this one i actually have one more uh that i want to do i feel like all season long all i do is put them up in the rafters of my barn so that all one swoop you can kind of do it and, and clean it up but uh kind of the tools if you want to do this at home is you do need some sort of system to boil the skulls in there's a lot out there this is kind of a mac daddy deluxe one um but it can do an elk it can do a deer it can do whatever obviously you need propane and then we ended up just using a power washer so kind of what i have done for the past couple of year couple skulls we did we'll fill this up with water you add like a little bit of dawn dish soap in it to help break it down or you can add some other stuff I was reading on the internet that you can use, but that's what we'll do. And you let it boil for like an hour, kind of on a low simmer, and then we'll come back. Power wash as good as you can, a bunch of stuff off. You let it dip back in for like 20 minutes, uh, and then you do it again. You kind of keep doing that until you get a good clean skull. Ta-da! This was a late season Iowa buck, so you can see it's not whitened yet but this is what it'll look like after boiling kind of rough. Just a rough skull. So hopefully we can get this guy the same way because it is cool. I kind of, you know, we chase this deer all year long. Kind of cool to at least end the chapter. Still sucks that he died. Okay, here we go. Off. On. So it does take a minute, or it, it honestly takes like 10 minutes to get this big thing fired up. So since this was like a deadhead, it's the bottom jaw's in, 
obviously there's a bunch of hair and everything so i'm gonna do my best real quick just to get a lot of this off but i feel like since this is kind of like hardened and everything um i might have to boil it for a while with some extra junk on it just to get it off also what i'm going to say all said and done once this guy is hopefully one horn back on with the other antler hopefully we can score this bad boy and we're going to do um some sort of giveaway when you guess what the score is and later on i'll i'll, I'll comment below what the actual score is yeah i guess it smells really bad i don't know if it's the added uh hair or the added juices or whatever but it's been going for like an hour and a half or more we kind of got sidetracked but it looks like a lot of it's coming off, all that hair and everything. So now, man, that smells bad. <coughs> now we're gonna power wash it uh, off, which will be nasty. Do you want a close up of this somehow? Not really. <laughs> Can I stop this? Probably. Round one. We'll dunk it back in. We got a good majority of it off, but we'll dunk it back in for some time. The real arts and craft time begins now. It's the next day. This video is becoming a multi, multi, multi-day video, but it's the next day. And we had a little accident, but we wanted to make sure that this guy was dry uh, age. That's the wrong thing. What it, What is it? Uh, dried. Moisture. 60-day dry. When we went and left and got this epoxy stuff from the store, right before we left, I wanted it to boil for the last little bit, last 20, 30 minutes. And I had to add a bunch of water to it because it, some of it evaporated. And like an idiot, I turned the heat all the way up because I wanted it to be quicker to get to the boil. And I got distracted and I was like, okay, let's go to the store. And I left it on high heat. And when we came back, there was no water at all left in it. And the bottom got pretty burned. Yeah, which kind of sucks, but honestly, it's okay. Structurally, it seems like it's all fine. Just now has this really dark, uh, the darker skull, but I think when we peroxide it and get it all white, it'll be fine. Our objective today is to take this to do this. That's right where it needs to be, right there, obviously. This is what Brochi 2 looked like when he was alive, but now he's dead and I went to go pick him up and his antler fell off. So I did a decent amount of research. We found one really good video, uh, actually maybe we'll link it down below, of uh, a taxidermist what they do is they take one of these studs. This is actually a stabilizer uh, weight stud, but this is what they were using, a threaded rod. I also bought like a couple different ones after watching these videos and thinking about it. I think this is still the best bet. What you're going to do is it's similar to those rack hub thingies. We're gonna drill into here, epoxy this into place, and then essentially we're gonna take this and then drill into here. And this side, you gotta make the hole a little bit bigger because it is gonna have some room and it'll epoxy it you know, tight. It's essentially gonna go down in there, mesh together, five minute epoxy it tight. Is it gonna work? I have no idea. Worst comes to worst, all else fails. We try to bust off this antler and we can just have two shed antlers of broke G2. It's just been some bad luck with this deer. All right, guys, bad encounter with him. Find him dead, go to pick him up, shed falls off. I go to just make them look pretty so I can put them on the wall or in the office or in the shed or whatever. Burn the burn burn them. Just <laughs> nearly catch my barn on fire. And now here we are. So hopefully we can get this bad boy uh, on here. Hopefully. You gotta give a little more than that. Oh well, no, I know. I'm just, oh. I'm just making sure, you know, before we yeah, yeah, yeah. cause some lasting damage. Bone does not smell very good when it's burning. Okay, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing, guys. I don't know. This is stressful. this in there. I'm gonna shove as much epoxy down in that hole as I can. Okay, moment of truth, moment of truth. I'm gonna put some on this bolt, actually. 
Okay, epoxy everywhere, epoxy everywhere. Now, that in, all looks well, seat it in. Now, I'm just gonna sit here and hold it because I don't have a better solution. Does it look good everywhere? Mm -hmm. Good morning, everyone. Next morning, and um, it didn't fall apart on us. We're gonna see, moment of truth, I don't know. Very sharp knife. I mean, it's not moving. There's pieces of the skull flaking there? off you. Yeah, I mean, the bottom of the skull is kind of not in great shape, but the top, top's good. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it actually worked. Welcome, welcome to uh, Chris's new show, DIY. Um, what we're gonna do is I want to score this bad boy now. I uh, did it very roughly, but now that he's together in one piece, pretty much in the same spot, always curious what he scored. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna score this bad boy. Guess in the comments below what you think he's going to score. Obviously, we're not going to include uh, his missing brow tine, even though we had photos of him uh, going up to it. So as is his score, what do you think he's gonna be? Comment below. In about maybe a week's time, I will pin the winner of the closest score guess, and we'll do $200 credit gift card towards bremerch.com if you guess the score correctly. So um, comment below what you know. Thank you all for watching. We'll catch you guys in the next one.